Hello, I'm James Mandelbaum, Senior Security Engineer at Gigamon. Today we're here to talk about taps and how to connect them. The agenda is reviewing what a tap does and how it does it. We're going to connect a copper tap, followed by a 1 gig, 10 gig fiber tap, and then finally a 40 gig, 100 gig fiber tap. When we talk about what a tap does, it's very simply passive in between two points on a network. If I take the fiber connection or the copper connection out of one of the endpoints, plug it into the tap, take a patch cable between the tap and that original endpoint, we are now sitting passively a bump on the road between those two devices. Those devices don't know the tap is there. And then that tap is making passively a copy of all of that traffic to send it off to the tool. Now the difference between a tap and a span is while a span has one path outbound, a tap has two points. It takes all of the transmit traffic out one, one port and all of the receive traffic out another port. When we look at a copper tap, we sit between the two endpoints. It's done electronically. So as this traffic flows within the tap, it electronically takes a copy, sends it off to both directions, one out to the endpoint, the other off to the tool. The same thing on the receive, receive traffic, it sent off also the secondary channel out here to the tools. It's done electronically, it requires power, which means in your copper taps, you'll wanna have a power supply with a battery backup in case that power supply fails or you lose power. And a lot of times for high availability, clients will install dual power supplies to make sure just in the event one of the power supply fails, you're always up and running. Now, unlike copper, fiber is done passively, doesn't use any power because all it's doing is splitting the light. So if I was to follow this circuit right here that's coming out, when it hits this point, it becomes a Y and a certain percentage of the light comes to this path and a certain percentage of the light goes to this, pa this path. Now taps are available in different ratios, maybe 50-50 where half goes one, half goes the other, 70-30, 70% one way, 30% the other. And that's up to you to decide what makes sense based upon your architecture, but just know that it's available and that fiber taps don't use power. Let's go ahead and get going on how you connect these up. So if I have an existing connection in copper between a switch and a router, and I wanna go ahead and insert the copper tap, I need to know, first of all, the, the design of the tap. So a copper tap that I'm showing you here is for a single circuit. If we look at this, and I insert it, like I said, I would take the existing connection from the router and plug it right into the side A of the network port. I would then take a patch cable and go from the side B of the network port and plug that into the router. Now those devices don't even know that tap is there, but it's able to make copies of the traffic. Now when I wanna connect up my device for monitoring, I have the two monitoring ports, that's the A and the B side, so I've got my transmit and my receive outbound to go to my tool. Now those ports are gonna feed into an aggregator or a packet broker or something that it can take the multiple feeds because most tools can't ingest those multiple feeds. If we move into a fiber, one gig or 10 gig, it's similarly the same, but the layouts are different. So if I've got that existing connection and I wanna connect that fiber tap, the fiber tap I'm showing here is a single module, but it will allow you to tap up to six circuits. So the highlighted blue section is one of the six circuits that this single tap module will support. Looking at that, this is side A and side B for the network side. And then the outbound side, there's tool side A and side B. So if we patch it in, just like before, I would unplug the connection from the router, plug it into side A, take a patch cable, and go from here back into the router. When it's time to go to the monitor ports, I would connect a single patch cable into this, which would be transmit and receive. But it's important to note, you would actually have to separate the fiber ends because they're now both outbound. So I would only be patching half of the A and the B sides when I go into my tool, which would either be again, a traffic aggregator or a packet broker. Finally, the 40 gig, similar concept. However, layout is slightly different. When I look at that fiber tap for 40 and 100, a single tap handles three circuits. There is my network side A and B, which is my in and my out in line, the bump in the road. And there are the monitor ports, the two outbound transmit sides. So if we connect it up, just like before, I would unplug either the router or the switch side, go into side A, take a patch cable, coming out of side B into the original device, and again, bump in the road. As I connect my monitor ports, I would now have two MPO cables for those data feeds. 
No, there is not a way to use a single MPO cable because you can't do what you would, for example, for an LC where I could split them in half. You can't cut an MPO in half and actually make it work. And yeah, you can cut it, but not going to work once you get there. So I'll need two MPO cables for the outbound, and they are now both transmit only. And again, just like before, ingesting that traffic into aggregators, packet brokers, because most of these tools can't accept the multiple feeds. Thank you very much. Look for me on my other videos here on the Gig Gigamon community page, as well as the YouTube channel, and be sure to follow me on Twitter.